Uh, hi Dan, uh, welcome to the new iPad blog and uh, actually you are the first one uh, we are starting a new segment in our website where we are going to feature app developers and app owners and ask them about their own app and uh, you know just share an experience so welcome to the new iPad blog podcast well I'm honored to be on the debut this is uh, quite fantastic alright uh, so Dan uh, I have been uh, you know using your app symbol uh, for like two three days now and it's really helpful what you have done and uh, just wanted to know how you came up with the idea of symbol was it just you know you dreamt of it one night or was it a gradual process well actually it was pretty quick this uh, this was part of the genesis of getting into the app business itself I was one of those early adopters in 2010 and of course, you know, you're really excited. You buy pages and numbers and Keynote and right. a number of other apps, and you start trying to do something with them. Then you realize, okay, I want to type in a registered trademark symbol into my pages document, or I want to put a you know, registered trademark symbol on just a desktop, I mean, on the, not the desktop, but the Surface icons that you have on your tablet, in my case, because I actually had came up with a brand name for a radar of where I was working in the past and it was a registered trademark Right. so I said okay let's do this and I found out how difficult this was and then I realized my you can't put in a lot of things very easily as a originator of content on your iPad so where are the limits of this and I kind of looked at a little bit of history I've been a Mac user for a very long time and how you do things and how could we bridge this gap and so it was out of my frustration of just putting in one symbol that led to the curated set of symbols in the symbol iPad app itself and speaking of, at that time my neighbor was Jeff Alexander and he also recognized the same thing and he was an expert right. designer so we, we collaborated initially to put this together I see it so it uh, the app idea basically came uh, because you were stuck with the problem and you wanted a good feasible solution to it right yes I did manage to get my symbol into my particular situation on my iPad at the time it took many many steps way more than was I could possibly see and be productive for anybody so we wanted to cut down the amount of steps at that point in time to the most minimal amount from getting from point A all the way to Z which is basically into your document with zero errors so that was the key I see and it. then okay. but the next thing I wanted to ask you is uh, you know uh, Dan uh, the thing about symbol is that it's a very specific uh, it's it's a very specific niche I mean like you have games and then you have productivity apps and uh, you know you have all sorts of apps you health apps and stuff like that but what you're trying to do with symbol is uh, you know it's very specific it's just solving uh, one thing and that's a very useful thing don't get me wrong so do you have uh, any plans to like uh, further develop symbol into something more or what are your plans oh yes Oh yes, most definitely. Um, Andy and I collaborated on the more recent update of Symbol in at the end of December 2012. Uh, we released that, which was version 2 series of Symbol, and that helped solidify its utility specifically to address some user requested extensions especially in the area of chemistry. Polyvalent ions was one of the absolute key things. Uh, modifying the user interface to streamline some of the associations between superscripts and subscripts to make right. sure that that was more efficient, uh, specifically for uh, physics and chemistry students and uh, professionals. Right. Uh, so let's say if you're doing a field report, you could you could utilize it more effectively. I have a number of wish list items from myself plus user feedback that I've received and I want to incorporate that into additional editions of Symbol to make it more powerful. The most powerful part of it unfortunately is not 
necessarily the most user friendly, although it at least gives the power user something to tap into, and that's the hex to Unicode function that allows you to basically arbitrarily put any Unicode encoding that you want into yeah, your documents, right. which is which is a very powerful tool, but it's not as streamlined as I would like it to be, so I've made some new concepts on how to address that. Right, and, okay. And so that, that's, that's what I'm going to build on in part there, and I want to make it so that it is, has more interaction for collaboration. That's the other area. So, so, so you, basically you have more and more ways to enter the data and then to collaborate with that data. Right, I see it. Uh, speaking of design, uh, I just wanted your thoughts that now that iOS 7 is coming out and everything is going to a flat, uh, you know, flat UI and stuff like that. So, are you having any plans in, you know, redesigning your apps like most developers are planning to redesign their apps completely for the new experience of iOS 7 that's going to launch this fall? So, do you have any such plans f for your app? Well, this is a this is a mixed blessing in my opinion because iOS 7's upgrades of user interface, many of them are very welcome. However, there is not been a, necessarily a, a blanket positive response by the user community about iOS 7's simplicity of user interface. My guess is that, yes, I'll definitely upgrade the design. I'm glad I did not try to do a major design shift on version 2 because of the iOS 7 changes being so dramatic. I would have been yet had to rework it one, you know, again. So this is this is an area where I would have to say most definitely there's going to be a redesign and influence because of iOS 7 and also APIs are another factor that might play into this even more so underneath the hood. So part of it will be visible. So the presentation uh, overview will definitely get changes because of iOS 7 and then functionality and way, the way the functionality is driven with the APIs that become more available will right, also right. be ways to streamline that interface a bit. Okay, uh, so the next question is a one question that I'm going to ask all uh, you know developers and app owners is that uh, what are your thoughts when you guys put so much passion into developing an app and of course it's for the app community but ultimately it's about you know making some money and then jailbreak uh, you know devices that are jailbroken they can you know download stuff uh, from uh, Cydia uh, download the uh, you know the app files and stuff and get it for free so what are your thoughts on that well I mean the, the first part of the passion is of course having user adoption, you know, whether you, you know, I periodically put in, you know, the, I make the app available at a discount through the Apple Volume Purchase Program. It's not that expensive to begin with. The people that are using those tools are partly doing it because they're either economically disadvantaged or they're just wanting another way to get the applications I don't necessarily see that as an impact on my bottom line as much. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, it is important, mm -hmm. that, however, that app developers get the revenue because it makes it very hard. I mean, yes, I uh, you know I can sell thousands of apps. I have considerable because my original developer was a great friend of mine as well as a, a colleague in this. I, I had to financially help him out a great deal before he passed away from, from, from lung cancer. So I've acquired some debt from that that, uh, that I have to pay back for my own personal well-being That because I feel like I'm thy brother's keeper. And I think that anybody else has to understand that when they, if they're using tools like that, that there is an impact on the developers in a real way. It is not a lifestyle thing. It's just as part of their survival and their ability to reinvest into the development of effort. The, uh, the efforts are almost always stronger when they have good solid sales. There's no question about it. Right. Okay, then. Uh, so we, 
you know we are coming at the end of, end of this interview and uh, before uh, we end the interview i just want you to say uh, to all our readers and all our viewers uh, who doesn't know about symbol anything you you would like to tell them the tool is meant to help writers and i like to help content creators with the ipad I, and I really applaud your blog and other people out there that that understand the tablets and the iPad in particular. People want to need the tools to say, I'm just not going to be a consumer of content. I'm going to create something of my own, either for my class, my profession, my colleagues, my family. And so the tools that I'm providing are for that. And I encourage other people to find other niches in creative content, or if they're just inspired to write, to look at tools like Symbol and say, hey, I can not only do writing, but I can do, be more precise. If I'm a chemist, I can put right. a chemical formula in. Or if I'm a writer of a fiction, and I want to put a double dagger in my storyline because I want to be more like Ed Edgar Allan Poe or somebody like that, in a classical sense, they can do it. Or to look to your blog to find more tools uh, for movie making or any other kind of content creation, uh, you know, drawing pictures on the iPad, which I don't have any apps for, but I know that you will be covering uh, and have covered in the past. Anything that yes. lets them do something new, I think is great. Right. Okay, Dan. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us in this interview. Uh, you know, uh, what you're doing is great and. Uh, uh, I wish all the success for Symbol and I hope that you continue to develop this app uh, in the future and help tons of content writers. I know a lot of them. I know, trust me, I know a lot of them who use their iPad on a daily basis to write content and custom content. And for us and for the many journalists, Symbol is a great tool and it's also a great tool for the students uh, as well. So thanks again, uh, Dan. and. Uh, I hope you will uh, join us on our blog as we uh, develop more and feature app developers uh, like you in the future. Well, thank you very much. This is this is quite an honor to be part of the debut, and I I look forward to listening to other developers and hearing their experiences and how they're charting new territory and new innovation in, t in the in the iPad specifically. This will be very exciting going forward. <laughs>